recently I put out a video and you all know that because you are all here because of that video because it did way better than I expected it to. And uh, there were also a lot of questions that came up in the video, about the video. So before I put out the second video, I wanted to address some of those questions because I feel like I'm going to get those questions again, a lot, and even more. Don't mind the baby birds, they're very noisy. The first half of this video will be answering the questions that were on the poop house video, and the second half of the video are the questions that people asked me a year ago, and I made a video response and then never put it out because I'm a terrible person. So, the question I get asked most often is, when is phase two coming out? As soon as it's finished. I am working on it, but please remember, I am one person. I do all the work alone, I do all the filming, I do all the editing, it's just me. So it does take some time. I also don't know what I'm doing. And also, it's not the only thing that I do. I'm very busy. The second most asked question is, what is the story of the house? So, here goes. Uh, about two years ago, I asked my brother to buy me a house, and uh, I know that sounds weird, but as a project concept, it's really great, because where am I going to learn more than if I had my own place to fix up? Now, I didn't want anything big. I wanted it to be small with a little bit of property, and preferably something that needed some work to be done so that I would have something to do other than repaint the walls black. This is what he gave me. I'm not going to complain because this is what I asked for, although it was a little bit more than I asked for, but um, I kind of fell in love with this property as soon as I saw it, even though it was covered in garbage and rat poop. So when we first got it, we did a walkthrough. That video can be found somewhere. I got some comments that I shouldn't call it a tiny house because it's not really tiny because the actual definition for a tiny house is 400 square feet or less and this house is about 700 square feet. You get my point though, right? Like this is not a large house and by the standards of the place that I live, it is tiny. So while it should be called a small home, I will continue to call it a tiny house because it is tiny. And I will continue to classify houses as micro, tiny, average-ish, and McMansion. I am aware that many people outside the U.S. have much smaller living spaces, and some people are saying, oh, your bathroom is the size of my entire house. I, I get it. Like, I've been to many, many, many countries. I've seen a lot of things. Also, I used to live in the corner of a wood shop. There was no bathroom. And then I also lived in my car when I worked at a lumber mill. So I get it. I'm not roughing it. The house is small. And you know it. There were a lot of opinions about the previous owner of the house. And I'd like to remind you that this house was abandoned for who knows how many years before I got it. There were also multiple squatters that took over the space. So the state in which you first saw the house is not the state that the previous owner left it in. The previous owner was a man named Joaquin and I think he seemed pretty great. I did get a lot of stinky comments from people who said I shouldn't have shown his name on camera. Of all of those comments, this was my favorite. <laughs> You are absolutely entitled to your opinion, even though you are incorrect. I think that Joaquin and I would have been pals, and based on the fact that I'm in touch with his grandson, I'm not wrong. So yeah, I showed his name on camera. I honor him. He is not forgotten, and he'll always be a part of this place. I also see that a lot of you are under misconceptions about the term hoard, hoarding, and how I use it. So let me break it down for you. Hoarding is the persistent difficulty discarding or parting with possessions because of a perceived need to save them. Excessive accumulation of items, regardless of actual value, occurs. It is based on the noun, derived from the Old English. A treasure, valuable stock or store, an accumulation of something for preservation or future use. Also from Proto-Germanic, 
from Proto-Indo-European root, and the verb, to treasure up, collect, and store, amass, and deposit for preservation or security or for future use. You get the picture. Hoarding does not mean the most of your case ever recorded. It has levels, just like everything else. I found seven identical coffee makers in a place where one person lives. That is hoarding. And P.S. I'm a hoarder. I have a giant cardboard box that is filled with empty boxes because they're really great boxes. I also have numerous empty notebooks that I will never use because once I write in them, they will become specific to that type of writing. Are they useful? Absolutely! Will I use them? Remains to be seen. Hot button topic. Recycling. Thank you to everyone who condemns me for not recycling. And how do you know that I don't recycle? I have no idea because you've only ever seen me put things in bags. Where do the bags go? You don't know because I never showed that part. So, fear not, dear Earth Warriors. I do my part, as should we all. Recycle. As for the idea of donating to a secondhand shop or charity, it is such a great idea and I am 100% in with donating anything that you can or want to get rid of, or even things that someone doesn't want to get rid of but they really should, do it because there are people who need things and it's awesome to not put it into trash if you can't recycle or just, you know, give it forward to someone who could really use it. The problem here is that everything was completely covered in feces. So, <laughs> I don't know about the places that you're thinking of, but I know where I'm from because I donate all the time to thrift stores and to libraries because I believe in those types of institutions. They will not take the things in this condition. That I know for a certainty, so I appreciate and yes, things should go to secondhand shops and libraries, but not the things that then they have to throw away and then decontaminate because, as aforementioned, covered in poop. And yes, I threw away toilet paper in the time of COVID. Oh my goodness. First of all, that was pre-COVID. Second of all, wiping your butt with rat poop is not a great idea. The tub, the sink, the stove. I did not get rid of any of them, do not worry. The tub is going into the backyard, it will get refinished and I'll have it set up for my outdoor bathtub. The stove is getting its guts pulled out, I'm going to repurpose it into some sort of shop storage. And the sink, that is getting the biggest makeover because that will be my shop sink. My much loved and revered shop sink. So video coming on that in like 50 years. My choice of music for the video. For all of those who noticed that I edited to the music, thank you for noticing. That took so much work. iMovie was not set up to edit a movie to the music. It was incredibly difficult. It took so long. I'm really glad that you appreciated it. For those of you who asked what all the names of the pieces were, all of the music came from Epidemic. It is a subscription-based music website for content creators. So everything came from there and I don't remember the names of any of them. Go and search. And for everyone who hated the music, turn your sound off. PPE or personal protective equipment and EDW, everyday wear. Uh, thank you for your concern over my well-being. I appreciate that people were concerned about um, the health ramifications of working in a space like this. I assure you I did take precautions. I do believe that hantavirus is real because it is and I'm not an idiot. However, the uh, hantavirus is active in the excretions of the small rodents for two to three days under normal temperatures after being excreted. Yeah, that's a fun sentence to say. <laughs> When I got the place, nothing lived here. Even the rats had deserted it. Everything was sunbaked. I was not worried, but I did, however, wear a filtration mask. That was for this main area and the rat poop slash dust. The, <laughs> the bathroom demolition part of it was a whole other story. And here's a little preview of what that PPE looked like.
So while y'all were worried, the mask that I wore was sufficient for the particulate that I was not inhaling at the time, and I wore what I work best in, which are my dovetail workwear and my Converse. I wear these pants and now these shorts every day for work, and they're the best thing that I've ever found, and I love them absolutely. I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to check them out because they really are fantastic. If you're planning to do anything like this that may or may not have health ramifications, please do your own research. I am not an expert. I'm figuring out as I go. And even through things that I've posted on social media, I've had registered nurses and doctors reach back and say, hey, try doing this because this is a better way because this way you might die. I don't want to die. I don't want you to die. Uh, do research, take precautions. Carpet in a bathroom. Yes, carpet in a bathroom used to be a thing. It's not anymore, but when this place was built, it was a thing. I have ripped it out. It'll never be a thing in this house again. So yes, it was real. It's not now, but I appreciate that y'all are as outraged as I am about carpet in a bathroom. But also a PS, um, there are some people who have carpeted bathrooms because it's where an elderly person lives and they don't want them to fall in on a slippery floor and you know wet surfaces and all that. So yeah, I get it, but you could also just like put down an area rug with the little sticky things underneath. It's better than carpet. Everything's better than carpet. Why didn't I use a bulldozer? Easy answer. I don't have a bulldozer. But more seriously, I didn't want to just level the place. I wanted to know what was here and what I needed to do. So as I cleaned up and stripped down the walls and pulled down the ceiling, I get to see the bare bones of the house. These are the bare bones. And yeah, I've seen framing done before, but this is a very intimate look for me and this house. And if I walk onto a construction site where people are working, they don't have the time to, to walk me through everything and point at things, but this way, I have an unedited look at everything, electrical, plumbing, or lack thereof, and just the walls themselves and the ceiling and how it was constructed. I can better base my questions off of what I see here than just trying to think of what I think a house looks like when it's not wearing any clothes. I'm gonna do what I can with what I have. That's, that's what I like. I want to rebuild this place. I don't want to build a new place. I could have done that anywhere. Yes, I could have used a shovel to clean things up, but I wanted to touch every single piece of whatever was in here. I got to know the person who lived here based on the things that I found. I found treasures. I found things that are not treasures, but to me they're treasures. And you might think it's a good idea to shovel clothes into a bag, but let me tell you, it's not easy to shovel clothes. I could have used a pitchfork though. So those are the questions that I thought were really worthy of answers. I went through and answered some of them. Um, there were so many questions that I was overwhelmed and I didn't even get to read them all. Also, some of you people are really mean, so whatever to you. But the last thing that I want to say is thank you because there's nothing special about me. I'm not brave. I'm not like, I'm not anything. I'm just a person who doesn't know what they're doing trying to do something that they believe in. And my goal is not to teach anybody anything because I don't know anything. My goal is to show you that you don't have to know anything to start doing something. It's about reminding you of the things that you're capable of, even if you didn't know you were. So thank you to everyone who has been encouraging. And even thank you to the sneaky people because I can read your comments and be like, hey, at least I'm better than that guy. Okay, before I get to last year's questions, I'm gonna read some of my favorite stinky comments. Um, there's so much that I could say about them, but I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just going to read them out loud. Here we go. That's five minutes of my life that I cannot get back. I regret ever giving you a view. That is a person's life and by the looks of it, it has been a while since they were able to tidy up for you. Glad I left when I did. 11 rubbish bags and you call a day. Hmm. Last summer, me being 18 years old, I have cleaned that big container of gravel, concrete, and lots of rubbish in a day. Do you think you can do better when 11 bags 
even if you are a small lady as you are. Smiling. The person who used to live here has got a lot of treasure. Heart, edit. Don't like the YouTuber. For a person wearing an unmatched pair of shoes, you are very judgmental going through this stuff and acting like you don't understand why it was owned. Would hate for you to clean my space. My favorite. <clears throat> Everything is going well, but I still can't believe you don't have boobs. Yeah, me either. Okay, I'm done. The rest of the video is questions from last year. Watch it or don't, whatever. The next phase of the poop house will be coming out as soon as I finish with it, which is soon-ish. Thank you, and I'll see y'all later. I can't believe I don't have boobs either. Just like... Really? And now to the questions. Hopefully this won't take as long as it did last month. There were a lot of questions, so. I have been diving into simpler electronics and programming, Arduino, and integrating that silliness into my current builds. Do you think you would ever want to try getting into the zappy side of projects or just stick to the hack slash whack? I don't have any particular strong desire to do it, but it could open up a lot of doors. Literally, because it's electronic, it could open them automatically, and that would be cool. Will there ever be other guests on the vlog? Will Gary join if you move the vlog outdoors? Well, answer, yes, Ellen. And there will be more. Gary, we'll see. You don't know what to make? That tells me you need an idea box. I like that. I may or may not make it. What's your favorite project you've made from any channel? And controversial warning, what's your favorite thing that Ben has made? <sighs> I would have to say that the favorite thing, the favorite, my favorite, my the favorite. I would have to say that my favorite build was the hammer. It was the most outside of my realm, the most physically and emotionally taxing. And in the end, it turned out a lot different than I had imagined, which is true of all of my projects. As for my favorite thing that Ben has made, you know, I don't really watch his videos, so it's hard to say. Videos and raising dingus. How do you have the time? I don't. Nobody has the time. This is why I don't make that many videos, and this is why dingus is constantly getting injured. Well, I got an electric motorcycle, <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm so mad at you. It's really hard being a parent to a 23 year old. Do you think making is in a person's DNA or is it handed down through family like if you had creative parents? I think that the general interest can be handed down through parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, next door neighbors, whatever, but I do think that the idea of wanting to solve a problem solve a puzzle, fix something, build something, I think that's something that is in you and it can manifest itself in many different ways. But I do think that that is something that you have inside of you from the time that you're born. Do you enjoy the work you do? That's all that matters. I do. There are aspects of it that I absolutely hate. I hate being on camera. But, no matter how much I complain about it, every time I go and hit that publish button on a YouTube video, it is an intense feeling of satisfaction. And once it's published, it's out there. No changes. You just let it go out into the world on its own. It's a good feeling, and I like that a lot. Is there a question you wish people would ask that they never do? And if so, what is it? And what is the answer? Just in case you go all pedantic on me. Yes, Sharon, there are lots of questions that I wish people would ask, but 
I can't say them here because then that's all they would ask me and no one would ever come up with them on their own. So just know that I have them and nobody's asking them. Will you be interested in making a modern builds video just like how Mike makes one? It'd be really cool and you have a lisp, but it's really adorable. Question mark. Question mark. Because I'm not sure if I can actually say that. Keep it up, big fan. Lego my ego. <laughs> Maybe. I also asked Instagram if they had any questions, and once again, we'll try and do this fast lightning round. <clears throat> Favorite bands to listen to while working on projects? Depending on my mood, the Dreadnoughts or Explosions in the Sky. Did Mike buy you a new towel? No. What is the first thing you remember creating? Uh, I could not tell you the first thing, but I have long-standing memories of making bows and arrows, and that was probably about six or seven. Are these special desert squirrels? The Garys are white-tailed antelope ground squirrels, and they're not uncommon, but the Garys they're very special. How much wood could a Gary chuck if a Gary could chuck wood? About seven cords or 49 board feet. Would you ever grow algae? I just, I really don't know what this means. Is this a euphemism? Or do you just really want to know if I want to grow algae? I'm so confused by this. Uh, maybe? How does one become a squirrel god like you? A lot of patience and a lot of granola. What is the airspeed velocity of a laden swallow? African or European? And what's it laden with? Coconuts, right? You're wondering where the coconuts came from? We're all wondering where the coconuts came from because as we know, African swallows are non-migratory and a European swallow is too small to carry a coconut unless they teamed up and carried it together, but we all know that's not gonna happen. So it's an unanswerable question but if you're wondering what the airspeed velocity of an unladen European swallow is, it's 24 miles per hour or 11 meters per second. How are you doing? Weird and happy. When are you releasing the Foot Clamps and Unusual Yoga book, My Money is Ready? It's in production right now. Um, I will let you know and uh, James, you are invited to the release party. How did you get into the Atlas Obscura? Any good stories about the places you have visited? Visited? That's hard to say. Um, I think that I found it because I was researching ghost towns for my first road trip, and I think I just googled ghost towns, and something on Atlas Obscura came up. I have a lot of stories about my experiences, but uh, you'll have to wait to hear those. Can I borrow Gary? No. Best sandwich filling. <laughs> I can't say it. Filling. Filling. Sandwich filling. Best sandwich filling. That completely depends on the type of bread. If it's a Hawaiian roll, then salami. If it's real Italian bread, uh, then just butter. What drives you? Honestly, waiting till the last minute to do something and then absolutely having to do it. That is the biggest driving force. How did you get so damn cool? What's your secret? I ate a lot of mayonnaise sandwiches when I was a kid. What is it like to still not have a bed frame, assuming you still haven't made one? Don't pretend you know me, Nick. And no, I don't have one. Um, it's a little dusty. Chicago or New York style pizza? Choose wisely. Um, I'm actually a big fan of Italian pizza, the rectangular kind that has potatoes on it. Big fan. Did the Garys get their names from Fallout? No. When I met the first Gary, I saw him and I said, Hi Gary. Turns out he's a girl. How long did it take you to get him to get used to you? Um, I'd say probably a month. I think, yeah, I think Mike was here about a month before he got used to me. What's your biggest ambition as a maker and what's your biggest accomplishment so far? Ambition is just to do things that I haven't done before. So in that way, 
every build is my biggest accomplishment so far. Is this Gary shippable and when will it get to me? No. If you were a pirate, where would you hide your rum? <sighs> Easy. In the drawer with all my tampons. Nobody looks in there. What motivates you in the morning? Feeding Gary does not count. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, nothing motivates me in the morning because mornings are terrible and always will be. How long have you been making things? All my life, but uh, I only started doing the YouTube thing now three-ish years ago? Four-ish? Four-ish. Have you ever had any interest in leatherworking? I've done a little bit of leatherworking, nothing exciting, uh, just a little bit of hand sewing. I have interest in doing a lot more of it. Um, if you're looking for videos to watch though, I recommend The Red Smith. Okay, I think that was all the questions. I kind of mixed up some of them and may not have gotten to all of them. So if I didn't, oh well.